What's going on guys? And as promised and highly requested, we are going to do a video on striper fishing tackle and all the basics of striper fishing tackle with no BS. So uh, to help me do that, my friend Brian Bear, who is a, a striped bass fishing national champ and won the national championship tournaments and a two-time team of the year winner, is going to do an explanation on what he uses because he is a specific striper fisherman. That's what he does. I like multi-species stuff, so a lot of my rigs and stuff like that are uh, designed for or are chosen to do multiple different things. But Brian's tackle is specific for striped bass. So um, here we're going to see uh, what Brian uses and why he uses it, where you can find it and purchase it, stuff like that. And then after that, we'll go over what I use. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Brian Bear, and I'm with uh, Team Barely Time, the professional striped bass fishing team. And I'm sure you've seen me fishing a lot with Mark Cooper over this past winter. And uh, Mark wanted me to do a quick video and kind of share some of the uh, tackle that I use um, and hope that uh, it'll help out some of the stuff. I guess he's been getting a lot of questions on more specifics of tackle and stuff like that that we use to catch these, these big fish. Um, I myself been sharper fishing since the early 2000s and I've been tournament fishing since the mid 2000s. So uh, it, it's, it's been a while and I'll say a lot of the things I've learned along the way I've, I've learned by mistakes that I've made in doing tournaments and so pretty much everything I do has a reason behind it and the reason is usually because I've failed at some point in time um, in a tournament and so I've had to kind of rethink, re-up my game um, to, to be better for the next tournament. So um, this table right here we have has a lot of equipment on there so we'll go through a lot of this stuff. Um, I'll start off with I guess uh, fishing reels. Um, all my rod and reels are either ugly stick striper rods, uh, medium heavy, so just a regular old Shakespeare ugly stick. Um, I guess I'm holding it upside down. Let me hold it this way. Ugly stick Shakespeare rod, um, striper rod, and they are medium heavy seven foot rods. Um, you know they're just they're good rods. I mean they're fiberglass rods. They're cheap. They're thirty dollars. You know, I think, well, I mean, they might be $39 now. I've had these, a lot of these rods I've had for over 10 years. Um, when they were $30, I think they're $39 now. Um, most of my reels are Abu Garcia 7000s. And, uh, but I am switching, switching these. Um, uh, just because I've, I've tried one of these uh, Daiwa, um, or Pen, I'm sorry, not Daiwa, the Pen Squall 20s. And they just seem to have better drags on them. Um, I just I just like that reel better. It feels better. It's got it's got more bearings in it, carbon fiber washers in it. Um, these these guys have gotten where they're 160, 170 dollars. These are 120 dollars, and I think it's actually a, a better reel. These pen squalls. So I've been switching slowly, switching over um, from 7000s to the pen squall 20s uh, on all my reels, but the rods are still the same. It's the same. This is a tsunami, tsunami Japanese brand white hot or tough tip. I think it's called medium heavy seven foot rod. Um, I actually love these rods. Um, they don't make them anymore. I wish they did because I've beat the crap out of these things for 10, 15 years and for thirty dollars, <laughs> I've caught a lot of big fish on these rods and won a lot of money on these rods right here. So um, they, they've, they've done well. So I guess uh, all, the, all the line that I use, um, I get off of eBay. All my main line on my reels is Berkeley Trilene. This is a 5,000 it's like a 5,000 yard spool of line. So that's like, it's, it's almost, it's like three miles of line. Um, I get these off eBay for like a hundred bucks or something like that. It's crazy, crazy cheap. 
um, and I retie all my rods and reels every single year. Um, at the start of the season, tournament season, I will re-spool all my line, okay? Um, all my leader line, all my leader line is uh, Cigar Invisex, 25 pounds. The, the Berkeley, the big game main line is 30 pounds. Um, that color is called Solar Collector. Is the color, yeah, it fades, but I'm changing that every year. Um, so it doesn't matter if it fades, it's not gonna fade out that much in a year's time. So, um, you know, I'm fishing for tournaments for $25,000 and all kinds of big money. So I want fresh line on all my reels. Um, so I do that once a year. Uh, all my leaders get retied before every single tournament. I retie everything uh, before every single tournament. And this is CR and Vizex. 25 pound fluorocarbon liters. All right. And then this is just your Power Pro braid uh, right here. This is what I use to tie my stinger hooks onto my main hooks. Um, I used to use, I used to use a cinch knot um, on my stinger hooks. I would use a cinch knot and just use the tail of the cinch to tie my stinger on, okay? Um, what I found was when a big fish hit, you know, some of these fish, they hit so hard, so violent, that little section of fluorocarbon cannot absorb that impact, okay? So I was breaking fish off um, right here. So now what I do is I use 80-pound braid, and I tie, tie my stinger right to my main hook, okay? That's, that's how I tie that. And obviously, all my hooks are 4X, uh, Gamagatsu, those are just J-hooks. Um, they're circle hooks, but not octopus circles. They're just circle J-hooks with an offset. Um, and you match, just match your hook size to your bait size. That's, that's all I can say about that. But um, I've run anywhere from a 5 aught to a 9 aught on the main line, and anywhere from a 2 to a 2 aught on the treble. And these are 4X treble hooks. Um, after you had a big striper bend out a few treble hooks on, on regular hooks, you'll quickly go to 4X. Um, you'll, <laughs> I've had some big stripers straighten out 4X hooks. So, uh, yeah, so everything's, everything's stout. Um, my philosophy is a striper will hit an umbrella rig. Um, so they're not hardware shy, so I'm not worried about if they see the line, see the hooks, all that kind of stuff. It's They'll hit an umbrella rig. They will hit a metal, piece of metal with plastic lures tied to it coming through the water. They're not worried about hardware. All right. Um, for planter boards, a uh, good, good friend of mine, Lewis Buckwell on Lake Murray down in Columbia, South Carolina, makes, makes the planer boards that I use and these are called the ugly board if you can see that name right there ugly board all right um, yeah they might be a little ugly but you know what they pull great okay um, I'd put my little touches on here I put the uh, reflective tape on there because I feel like on a on a bouncy windy day when there's a lot of chop in the water this thing is just you know creating all kinds of reflection and attracts attention of fish with that tape, so I put that tape on both sides. Um, and I like a metal board. This is a metal board. Um, I've literally seen or talked to people using those plastic boards on a windy day. They're so light, the plastic boards just get taken by the wind and literally just go off sailing in the wind. So uh, I like a heavier board. I fish a lot of current um, in a lot of rivers, and the heavier board just works better under those type conditions. Uh, you know, the lighter board is just, it's gonna flip up out of the water and stuff in that heavy current doesn't, doesn't work very well. Um, for rod holders on the boat, we use these Scotty rod holders. Um, they're like $19. Um, I, thought, I think the cheapest place I found these is walmart.com. And for $19, that's a very, good rod holder. Um, 
been plenty of times where I've parked the boat at a night at, at a hotel for a tournament and had to unhook the boat to go eat dinner or was, you know, you're, you're in a single car parking space. So you got to unhook the boat. I'll actually use these for a wheel block and forget they're there the next morning and drive slap over them and it does not break. Um, you know, uh, these, these have just been really sturt and stouty uh, rod holders for, for $19. Um, so yeah, uh, the line, all this comes off eBay, all my line, all this stuff comes off eBay, you know, super, super, super cheap. All my reels, I used to buy all these reels. Um, used to buy all these off eBay for 70 bucks. I think cause all I pay, you know, 70, $80, you can usually find a 7,000, a used 7,000 on eBay for like $70. So um, I have started, like I said, I have started going to, going to these, these pen squalls, you know, I, like I said, for 120 bucks, I feel like they're just a far superior reel. Um, so I'm just switching over everything to those. Um, so on my line, um, I've just used a regular old barrel swivel. I think this is a size six or seven barrel swivel. Um, I think they're rated for like 70 pounds, maybe 80 pounds, something like that. Um, and the one of the guys that taught me about striper fishing when I first got started was big on beads. Um, I've just kind of continued, I guess it's more superstition than everything and than anything else. I don't know if the beads actually help, but I'm a bead fanatic. I will. If I forget a bead, I will flat untie or, or you know clip everything and retie all my stuff to put a bead on. There's no, there's not a line that goes out on my boat that doesn't have a bead on it. I just, I'm just a fanatic on it. I'll put a bead there um, up here by the weights. So this is just a quarter ounce egg sinker. Um, just helps keep the the bait down in the water, um, and especially in springtime, you know you have all the problems with ospreys and stuff like that. So if your bait's coming up to the top, I mean, that's a quarter ounce, but if you're still having problems with your bait coming up to the top, put a half ounce on there. I mean, if you got to put an ounce on there, put an ounce on there if you got a big bait on there. Um, or you're in, you're in heavy, heavy current, you can put more weight on there too. Um, so yeah, I even use beads right here on this, this main hook right here. So I don't know if it's like the bait is chasing a salmon egg or something like that, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, like I said, it's probably more superstition than anything else, but I have beads on, on everything. Um, so I did play boards, uh, as far as keeping bait, I use a uh, shad keeper. I'm not sponsored by them or endorsed by them or anything, but it's a phenomenal product. And there again, you get off eBay, uh, really cheap. You can buy it in like a big five gallon bucket. Um, Buy it in like a five gallon bucket and you know buy a few bottles of this uh, bass pro shops is going to be your cheapest place for this it's like 19 uh i think it's 19.99 or 19 dollars for a bottle of shad keeper at uh bass pro shops and you know it, it does a really good job of keeping your bait lively and and stuff like that because i mean your condition of your bait's everything if you don't have good bait then you're not gonna you're not gonna win win tournaments or catch big fish all right um, back again on bait. This is uh, a product I get off of Amazon. It's called Vanus Plus. It's a dechlorinator. Um, has a, says it has a stress reducer, adds slime coat, all that kind of stuff. Yada yada yada. It's a gallon of this treats twenty five thousand gallons of water. Okay, so um, I think there again, this is sixty dollars off Amazon versus eighty dollars for. A gallon of prime um, I think prime might even be more expensive than that nowadays it's been a while since I bought prime but this is what I use now it's called vanish vanish plus off Amazon um, we're catching bait you know this is the net I use right here for catching bait it's a bets um, sea green yeah sea green uh, 10 foot 5 8 mesh uh, net is what I'll throw to catch bait. Um, there's a website called 
uh, www.catchn, letter N, bait, uh, dot com, and you can get these nets for like a hundred bucks. Um, for the quality of that you get and stuff like that, I mean, I don't think you're going to beat the price. Um, you know, get these, there's a 10 foot 5 8 mesh net for a hundred dollars. That's, that's pretty dang on good. And, you know, there again, every year I'll buy about three, three to five nets, um, per season because I know throughout the season I'm going to tear them up. So that's it on equipment I guess. I mean my depth finder is a Laranche HDS 12 um, Gen 2 so it's it's pretty old you know. Um, you really don't I guess that's something that Mark and I both share is is um, you know we, we do more with with not so fancy equipment out there um, we don't have the most expensive stuff out there but you know we definitely catch some of the biggest fish out there so um, that's definitely uh, you know you don't need the hundred dollar rods and stuff like that these thirty dollar rods is going to catch just as big fish as, as any hundred dollar rod out there um, so anyways uh, yeah, I think that's all. Um, hopefully this answers some of the questions. I know Mark said he's had a lot of questions about specific on tackle and things like that. So hopefully this, this handles some of that for you. All right. Hope you all have a good night. All right, guys. So now we've seen what Brian uses uh, as his primary rods and reels for striper fishing, the type of bait nets he uses to catch bait, the rigs he uses, the type of line, leader line, hooks, the whole kit and caboodle, and this is from someone who's a professional at striper fishing. And um, we're not sponsored by any of the people we've talked about uh, for the tackle. We're just avid uh, fishermen who love doing it and love helping people learn how to do it. Um, so now I'm going to go over the type of tackle I use, which is very similar to Brian, plus a couple different styles of rods and reels. Alrighty, guys. So. Brian is a monofilament guy. I am a braid guy. I like uh, the line capacity you get out of braid and I like how uh, touch sensitive it, it is and there's no stretch so you feel everything that's going on. Um, braid versus mono is pretty uh, a pretty debated topic in the fishing world and it really boils down to what type of fishing you do the most often and what you prefer. Um, I just like the feel of braid um, so that's what I go with. Now in terms of rods and reels you just need a bigger style bait caster reel that can hold a long line, has a good drag system, and um, isn't gonna break on the big fish. So this is a Daiwa Saltis. This is a more expensive reel, but you can beat the crap out of these things and they will not die. So if you've got the money to buy something like this, go ahead and do that. Um, I've owned a couple of these for over a year now and have had no issues out of them, have fished probably 200 days with them I'd say now and have hauled in a bunch of big giant catfish, stripers, and muskies on these guys. For the rod, uh, most of my rods for pulling planter boards, anchoring with cut bait for catfish and stripers are the Warrior Cat Medium Heavy. Now they have a bunch of different models. I have a few heavies, but the Medium Heavy is a great all around rod. It retails for about $79, so it doesn't break the bank. And you literally can't, I've never broken one of these things uh, on a fish or um, not because of my negligence, basically. I had a, a cinder block drop on one going like 40 miles an hour that put a crack in one when uh, we were out on the road one day, but never had them fail, never had an eyelet fail, and I've used them for years. One of these up here is actually the original prototype for Warrior Cat that's like six or seven years old that's caught thousands of pounds of fish and has never failed. So they're a great all around rod. They're a, I like them because they are a bright color and have a white tip, so if you're night fishing, it stands out, and they're bulletproof. For the line, I use 65 pound test Suffix 832 braid on all of my reels. That is a more expensive type of braid, but I found that the longevity you get out of it and the usage you get from it is worth the cost difference from the cheaper braid like Spiderwire and stuff like that. It's uh, it, for braid, it's very abrasion resistant and it uh, doesn't fade as bad and just holds up for a long time. This has been on this rod for over a year now, caught tons and tons and tons of fish. You can see all the shad scales of blood and guts still on it, but that's what I use 
Uh, for leader line, I use 50 pound fluorocarbon, same brand as him, Seaguar. You can buy it online. I go a little bit heavier because I've got the braid and it doesn't have a whole lot of stretch in it, so it's putting more pressure on the, the leader line. And this is for, this type of rod and reel is for trolling planer boards, downlining and anchoring with cut bait because it's got a more sturdy tip, or not a sturdy tip, more bendable tip, and um, it's not as long and cumbersome. Now the second type of rod I use is a musky rod. This is a St. Croix. Um, the white one up there is an Abu Garcia. You've seen in a lot of videos. We've got a couple other St. Croix musky rods, but what I use these for striper fishing is balloon fishing because when you're fishing with the balloon, normally it's a pretty good ways out. And um, when you've got a longer rod, it helps you set the hook from a, a longer distance a whole lot better. So that's why I use balloon rods with the, the musky rods. And also we fish for striped bass with artificials and stuff a lot. And it has, it's basically designed to throw big musky baits which are essentially the same thing as striper baits. And they just carry over really well. So if you're throwing, let's see if we can pick this up. A big, big crankbait like that, jerk bait, stick bait, you need a rod that can handle it. And that's why I use these musky rods. And I started out fishing from the bank and a long rod when you're bank fishing, again, most of the time you've got to get your bait out a, a good ways from the bank to get it in the big fish zone, out in the deep water. And having that longer rod to set a hook at a distance really helps you out. So you don't have to start out with a St. Croix. This is a $200 rod. You can start out with one of these Abu Garcia's, which is 80 or 90. And you don't need a whole lot of them like you would if you're running a bunch of cut bait rides. This is, I have like two or three of them and I use them for a bunch of different things. And if you buy uh, a good rod and reel combo, it'll last you a really long time. But again, if you're just getting into it, try to find something on Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. You're gonna want something that's at least eight feet long, um, heavy action, extra heavy, because you wanna be able to set that hook from a long ways off and then have the, uh, the momentum to do it when you're that far away. Because if you're using mono and trying to set the hook from a distance you got to do the whole run technique with it or reel out a bunch of line or a bunch of slack to get tight with the fish with these setups you've got full contact at a distance and you know exactly what's going on now when you're ballooning stuff run a fluorocarbon leader just depends on the situations how long you want it to be i've got a little quarter ounce sinker on there like brian does to keep the bait down and that's just attached with a bimini twist type knot. You could use a barrel swivel. I just threw a bimini twist on it because it's easy. And um, that's basically all there is to it. Big uh, 10 knot gamakatsu. This is a two times strong hook. He uses four buys. I just didn't have any. Uh, but that is the basic rig I use for ballooning and uh, trolling artificials and throwing artificials, topwaters, big jerk baits, swim baits, Alabama rigs. This type of rig will do it all. Now there's Certain rods and reels that are designed for crankbaits, stuff like that, I don't really have the money to do all that, so I try to get stuff that will do it all at least decently well, and then myself as an angler has used, learned to use uh, just general things for multi-purposes. Because again, you know, you don't have to have all the money in the world to do this. You gotta have the love for it, the passion for it, and the desire to go out there and do it. And also you gotta respect the big fish. So this is the part where I wanna tell you, uh, my spiel. If you're going out and targeting these big fish and catching these big fish, you got to realize that these things are 5% five, 5 or less of their total population of fish out there for size. So they're very rare. They're the breeder size fish that you want to keep populating the water. So you need to have good tackle to get them in really quickly or as quick as possible so you can have a safe and healthy release. Now, everyone's not going to listen to that and I understand that. But I know the majority of you guys who love the sport of fishing and chasing big trophy fish also respect them and you want to be able to release them. And if you've got heavy tackle to do that, that increases your odds of being able to do that because you get them in more quickly without them tiring out. Alrighty guys, so we have covered a whole lot of information in this video and this has been targeted at striper fishing. So there's more questions you have want to learn about the tackle for catfish, different tips and tricks, how we rig stuff, or just have some general questions about fishing, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching this episode of Top Knox Fishing. I'm your host, Mark Cooper. We're here to give power to the angler, and I hope this has helped you do that.